Today we're going to try what USA wines taste like. I'm Jason. I'm Trent, and we're from the Wind Up, providing you an unfiltered, unapologetically, unprofessional uh, wine journey. And our slogan is drink more, try more, learn more. And so before we get into the USA wines, which I'm keen to try, let's start off with thoughts of the week. And I might go first. Uh, recently, I had a friend of mine ask me, how long does wine last after opening it? Mm. And that that's a common challenge, Good I question. think. Good question. Yeah, because... The wine bottle is quite big. You could probably get, what, four to five glasses, six, potentially six, six glasses out of it. And if you're not going to finish it all, you don't want it to go to waste. Uh, and, and typically, I advise them probably around two to three days. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that the I same advice? I think that's a good, good, good guess. It's a good guess. So, I wanted to check. I, I, I looked out there what is, what is that period that it should be. So I looked at masterclass.com. Yeah, that's cool. It's a good site. and Janice so, Robinson, isn't it? She's on there, yeah. yes. Uh, I don't recall if it was that one from her, but what what they were actually saying is that it's actually three to five days mm. and it's dependent upon the type of wine. So there, there's a bit of a longer yeah. time period. And, and so I guess what the challenge is, it's it's all about the oxygen. Yeah. What does the oxygen do? Once you've opened it, there's a whole heap of air that's going to go in and it's going to make it bad and and the things that can happen is it'll make it flat in flavor yeah or in the worst case it could make it vinegary and sour yeah is my understanding and, and so that's what we want to avoid and and masterclass.com had some great tips on on ways to reduce the impact of oxidization uh, a couple of tips after you have it seal the bottle so either put the cap back on if it's a screw cap even the cork yeah. can can help with it uh, or use a rubber stopper. Yeah. Do you have any other ideas uh, on that? Yeah, I use rubber stopper. But then also I've heard somewhere before that don't put the cork back into it because it just traps in all the oxygen and oxidation. I don't know. but Right. So it's so a different views. Yeah, different views, be. yeah. The, the other one which we've used, and I've seen you use this a couple of times, is if you don't have the cork and you don't want to put the cork on, yeah. you throw on a bit of cling wrap on yeah. the top, I've noticed. Yeah. So cling wrap and a rubber band. Yeah, that kind of works. Yeah, so, so Masterclass also recommended that. I, I remember being at a site uh, with some friends having a, a drink and I asked for cling wrap. They thought I was using it in place of a condom. That's not the case. It was just <laughs> to cover up the wine and reduce the <laughs> oxidization. Uh, so seal the bottle is one thing. Another thing to keep uh, consider is the temperature. Yeah. So keep it cool in a cool room or, or the fridge if you yeah. want. Uh, and if you want it to stow longer, also avoid the UV light. Can that, that can also damage the wine. In some yeah, ways. the other thing you do is just drink all the wine. Then you won't have the problem. That That's probably my preference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's your preference too. Uh, and, and so absolutely an option. Don't. Don't bother with all of that. Just, just guzzle it, which, yeah. will, which will be fantastic. Uh, and, and then the last one I saw was to put it in a smaller bottle because if you put it in its original bottle, mm. there's more oxygen in that bottle and, yeah. and, and the oxidization process starts. So the, the other one is, I think we've spoken about this before, but it's a bit pricey, the Coravin, Coravan. Yes, and I've always wanted to invest in one, but it is pricey. <laughs> Yeah, what's your thoughts on that? Have, have you oh, tried it? It's pretty cool. We see all the kind of wineries use it, all the kind of fancy yes. places use it. Yes. And I feel that, yeah, it's a good way to kind of preserve the wine for a bit longer. Yeah. Uh, how much is that? $500, yes, $600? Yes, I think last... It, it, it always teases me on um, Instagram or Facebook. Oh, these specials, you know, it was yeah. like a thousand dollars and now he's selling it for $700, which is still $700. That's right. And so my Asian tightness is... Use the Coravin uh, 500 to $600 or use cling wrap and, yeah. and that's a lot cheaper. So, yeah. so, so those are a few options there, uh, but, but good to find out, uh, you know, our original guess was around two to three days, yeah. three to five days, uh, depending upon the wine. Yeah. Well, what was your thoughts of the week? My thoughts of the week was um, I was looking at a website. I was getting very, very excited about it. Oh, not that kind of website. <laughs> Is that appropriate? Okay, what the website? And that website was news.com.au again. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was another one. Okay. Yes. No, another one. No, not the one that starts with P. Yes. Um, it's, so the, the article, the headline that it had was, um, wine could improve signs of aging. But, there, but there's a catch. Oh, okay, yes. So researchers from the University of Florida conducted a study on muscadine wine. So muscadine wine is a 
great varietal, very kind of, I think more in the United States, okay. which is a more of a kind of sweeter wine. And what they noticed through, I forgot how many um, sample size they use in terms of people, mm. but they noticed that it helped with um, skin elasticity and took out water to make you look more beautiful. Took so, out water, okay. Firms yeah. up the skin then. Firms All up right, the skin, great. elasticity. So think about that. Wine makes you more beautiful. Wine does so much. There's so much benefits. But remember the headline, it said there's a catch. So the catch mm. is... Yes. Drum roll. Yeah. It's when you take the alcohol out of it. It's when you take the alcohol out of it. That actually has its effects. Oh, that's, that's, that's a very big trade-off. Yeah. yeah. But then the other thought that kind of popped in my head off the back of this is that for me... When I have more wine, everything looks far more beautiful anyway. That's what I was originally thinking. It's yeah. the alcohol that just makes exactly. it Exactly. Yeah. You know, the kind of uh, the beer goggles, right? Yeah. The wine goggles. Okay. So that was my thought of the week. Like, it'll be great. You know, I, I'm always thinking for some um, affirmation of my wine addiction. Yes. To try and say, okay, wine's actually good. Like I said, I've seen somewhere before, like, you know, a glass a day is actually good for you. It has yes. antioxidants in the wine. Yes. So we're trying to look for things. Go, hey, look at this. It's actually good, to put, good for you. That's... Uh, <laughs> Another benefit to wine, and for anyone that's listening that that wants to find out why you should drink wine, here's a reason. Yeah, less water retention, better skin. All right. Yeah, but Fantastic. what have you been drinking? So, so what I've been drinking uh, in the last couple of days, I had the opportunity to to catch up with some friends. They invited me over to have some home wok fried pad si you for you for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Roger comes out. And appropriate because it's the wok. And I, I personally, I've actually got a wok at home. Yeah. Struggle to cook with it. I tried to do Pad Siu once. Did you wok and roll? I didn't wok and roll. I probably wok and mashed it because mashed the it. Pad Siu, if you get it wrong, it, you, the, the noodles get what mushy. What are you doing? But this this guy is, a, he, he didn't <laughs> ask me that. But this guy is an expert on, on the Pad Siu, really, yeah. really delicious Pad Siu. Uh, everyone had the opportunity to bring some wines yeah. over. And so we got to tr- taste a- quite a lot. And-, and the one that really stood out was a Shiraz from Barossa. It was a 2016 Sorby Adams, the Reverend Cannon Shiraz. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, but it was delicious. It was about $60 online. And so there's a bit of price to it, but I can understand why that price is there because I'd, I'd actually give mm. it an 8 out of 10. It had dark berries, um, delicious b- vanilla, plum flavors, mm. very smooth tannins. Uh, and it was a 2016, so it had a, a bit of age, not, it not significant. It worked well with the pads of you. I thought big with big would kind of kind of drown out each other. So. It wasn't about the pairing. It was purely <laughs> about that wine. By that time, I'd guzzled down all the pads of you, and, and it was on to wine sampling. So oh. I highly recommend that. If, if anyone's had an opportunity to taste it, let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you haven't, go go try a Sorby Adams Cannon Sorby Shiraz. Sorby Adams, wow. That's awesome. right. Sounds good. Okay, so on to today's episode. That's so. Right. The US of A, so very big, um, you know, um, lots of different wine areas as well. Like I haven't really looked into it. And this is part of just our wine journey as well as they kind of go across the world and look at different areas of wine. The, and the areas that um, within USA that, uh, that I was looking at was around Oregon. So I'll hear about Oregon Pinot from mm. the Willamette Valley. So we're going to try yep. that today. And the second was Napa Cabernet. So I'll try Napa, to do the, I always see, I try to do the accent, Napa Cabernet. Oh, it's not really no? there, but good, good no? try. Okay. Napa? No, 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 I can't do it yet. So, um, I had a, a cousin-in-law. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cousin-in-law come over from the United States recently and I I gave her the res- request. Okay, can you get a Oregon Pinot and a Napa Cabernet? Because I haven't tried a Oregon Pinot before and I've yes. Been going through this Pinot phase, and yes. Napa Cabernet I haven't had for like over ten years, and just kind of reacquired. You've myself been there, right? You've I've been, been to Napa. Before. It was yes. after one of the friends' bucks, and we kind of went through Napa. Yes, probably taste more of the tequila remnants from exactly. that bucks party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. I, I haven't had an American wine at all before. At, to all, be honest. at all, at and, all, and and if I like being uh, my parents are Filipino. I love everything American. Like Steph uh, Curry. We want to be American. Yes, basketball, yeah. Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, yeah. all of the hip-hop and R&B stars, yeah. Will Smith, if, you, if you're growing up at, at that Will age. Smith. Probably not Smith. Now is a bit of a challenge, but still love Will. <laughs> Will's a good guy. But 
America has always been a, a level of influence yeah. uh, for me growing up. But wine is one of those rare things I just haven't tried. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the cousin-in-law um, was short on time. So she went to the um, airport in LA, LAX, and then got these two wines for me. So um, we'll try the first one uh, first, which is the Pinot Noir. And it is the 2021 uh, Siduri uh, Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley. So in the wine journey, I always do a bit of research around yes. what is the, uh, the kind of characteristics of Oregon Pinot. And the ones that I, the words that kind of come, came through was, there's two words to describe Oregon Pinot, and it would be cranberries and earth. Okay. So we'll see whether we can taste some earth and some cranberries. Um, it says that the nuance, subtle, with high acidity that don't always explode with lusty fruit as compared to the Cabernet Pinot. I mean, the Napa Pinots. Anything lusty is fantastic. Lusty, yeah. Lusting. Uh, yeah, so okay. you see, it feels that um, it's probably a bit more restrained. I do, I think, um, I should just try and get through. I think the topology of the area around Oregon as well, how that kind of fog that kind of comes through. It's been of a, uh, I don't know, a valley that kind of yeah. then keeps the kind of grapes cool and creates a, a nice environment for Pinot. So it's a cool well. climate yeah, area. Cool climate. Right. Well, Pinot is a cool climate grape as well. So. Right. So interested to see how this one is. Um, uh, for this one, it says that it's sourced from six vineyards, three distinct appellations. Um, it's not single vineyard. So I think they also have like different categorizations. So this is from the valley as a whole. So it gives them kind of free reign and kind of pull from different vineyards, kind of pull together this wine. And also as I kind of was just learning more about that kind of area, it feels that um, it's only recently, I think, it's kind of come to uh, the fore around Oregon Pinot and they're really more of a community feel in terms of how they create these wines. So I was really interested to see how this wine compares towards our Yarras, our Tasmanian yes. Pinots and everything that we know about Pinots. Um, yeah, so let's try this one. Right, so so the one, the Pinot is the inside or the on, on the one on the outside oh, here? The one on the left, the lighter one. The one on the left. The left on the lighter one, yeah, okay. And and so as we're doing the wine up, we taste with our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. And it's interesting because off the bat, it feels a bit darker than some of the mm. other pinots that we've seen from Yara uh, and Tazzy. Yeah. And, and maybe like you you mentioned, soil. Yeah. It's kind of got that darkness, that browniness, yeah. that earthiness in the color yeah, to it. Yeah. And then if we if we try it on the nose, it definitely goes like big red berries. Like, I don't know. When I think about USA, yeah. I think about everything's big and huge, big yes. cars, big roads, yeah, giant super size, um, hung, hungry jack of Burger King meals, and super size like Coke, it's super size Coke. Yeah. And, and that's that kind of translates to the scent here. It's yeah. a lot bolder, bolder. It's, almost it's, like it's not hiding anything. I tell you that, but in a Pinot way. Yes, it, it almost reminds me of the boldness from a Shiraz yeah. uh, from from South Australia. Yeah. In terms of that scent, okay. And then if you if you give it a taste, mm. uh, as I smell it, there's still. Oh. I think it's more fruity than herbaceous, but there's still that coming through. When you and, and you left off a whoa. Which, uh, which, what does that? I can't even read that, uh, but it must be there's actually present. A lot, there's a lot of power to it. That's mm. what, when I got it, when I actually drank it. So you try, I'm going to try the second sip. Oh, the acid's there, the tannins there. It's, it's a big, it's a big Pinot for me. I've actually never had a Pinot this big before. Yeah. And it, you, you mentioned acid, the acid yeah. and the heat is, is really strong there. I'm curious the percentage of that. Uh, but it reminds me of a recent uh, Cab Sav that, that we had where the acid was quite Thir strong. 13 and a half. Okay, okay. Uh, but it has a bit of oak treatment to it as well. Comes through that vanilla spice. Mm, quite bold, like yeah. absolutely very yeah. different to the p other Pinots that yeah. we've had in Australia. Pinot, yeah. Yes. Or even like the the Kiwi ones, the ones in New Zealand, Yarra. It's less. It's not less nuanced, but it's just big on flavour. Yeah. yeah, I liken it to the emphasis of a Shiraz. The, yeah. the, the big and bold. Look at me. Yeah. What What'd you rate this out of ten then? With yeah. Cool 
it's interesting because it, it always relates to where what you're used to tasting and then you you make a, a relative uh guess on it yeah. look I, I it's not what i'm used to i don't dislike it uh I think it's got a, a great bold favor. I think it needs a bit more time and age on it to 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 smoothen mm-hmm. out. I would give this a seven out of ten corkscrews. Jeez, you're reading my mind again. Huh? Reading your mind again as you stare yeah, in my no. eyes. Yeah. Well, so well, a- any commentary? So you give it a seven out of yeah, ten. Yeah, seven as well? out of ten because I think um, maybe it's what you expect from Oregon. I don't know. It has a bit of that earthiness. Um, cranberries. It's like kind of. Going from red fruit to dark fruits, mm. um, and it's it's interesting, yeah. but it for me kind of loses the kind of elegance and sexiness of a pinot that I expect. Yeah, that's right. That's that's probably a good way to say it. The moment you said that, I, it rung true for me because because it's so bold and powerful. Th- there's a bit of lightness and and yeah. elegance is the yeah. right word. This is more bold and powerful in, in terms of a pinot. But mm. but still enjoyable and and uh, some nice medium tannins coming mm. through. Ooh. All right, that's good. That was interesting. We've, we're getting variety, and it's the yeah. first American wine that I've tasted. America, yeah. Oregon, great job. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna travel slightly lower. So Oregon's about a thousand kilometers north of San Fran. Okay, they're all in the west. Okay, on the west, west coast. Yep, west side. West. <laughs> So, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> and then, <laughs> a bit yeah. lower is Napa Valley. Okay. Um, if if you talk travel time, like oh, about, uh, I think about nine hours oh, to Oregon. Oh, significant yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's like Sydney to Brizzy is about nine hours. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, a bit below that is Napa. Yep. Um, and again, we're going to have the Napa Cabernet, and the one that my cousin-in-law lovingly provided me was a. 2018 Silverado Vineyard um, Cabernet from the Napa Valley. I always thought it was quite interesting, the name Silverado. It reminds me of that car. I remember the Silverado? No, no but the no. name I do remember, yes. Sounds, yeah. Okay, so we're going to try this one. Um, I'm used to the Tarago. The <laughs> Tarago. So if you know about California, it's hot. Yeah. I guess, kind of. So um, again, I did my research around um, what is Napa Cabernet. Um, known for so sunny warm <clears throat> not too hot uh and the grapes ripen slowly so that's kind of good cab sav kind of growing climates uh, it's got volcanic soils <clears throat> that uh adds earth and it says that it has a very dusty taste okay okay that so should stand still, out still yeah. for that dusty taste in um napa's wines and the yeah the dustiness adds a complexity to napa wine so interested to see again how does this Napa Cabernet compare to our Kunawaras? Yes. Our Yarra Cabernets. Margaret, our Margaret River. River Cabernets. That's right. I'm keen so to see. I'm again, I'm without smelling um, or tasting it. I'm expecting maybe a bigger, bolder version of what we're used to. So this one is uh, the Silverado is 17 months in oak, 40% new oak. Um, what we should be expecting is cherry, plums, plum flavors, a bit of apricot and toasted oak. So, and is there a view on the price on this? Or is it? Uh, I know in total I paid a hundred US for both. Okay. One was sixty-five, one was forty-five. Okay. So. Okay. Let's see. All right. So on the eyes, let's. Uh, sixty-five, thirty-five. So that's my maths. Uh, <laughs> you worked it out how yeah. to calculate to a hundred. Great. Yeah. So it's. On the eyes, it's very dark. Very dark, yeah. Uh, and in some ways, probably a bit darker than some of the cabs we've got here yeah. in Australia. And then on the nose. Oh. It's actually got a very nice scent. but Yeah, it's more... Oaky it's a, vanilla? Yeah, yeah it's so oaky. I yes. think, I don't know. I always think about... Now, Canada has that kind of more oak treatment. Again, it had a 40%, 42% new oak, 17 months. So it's definitely got that oak integration into it. Mm-hmm. Um, has cherries, dark fruits, yeah. Cherries, definitely cherries. And then if it, let's give it a taste. It's probably high alcohol. Oh, the tannins on that. 
You can taste the alcohol as well. Yep. The thing that stood out for me was the body. I think it's got a really nice um, medium to, to heavy body, but the feel on the mouth, it's got some great volume and, and texture to it. It feels that, I don't know, for me, it doesn't feel like it's coming together as one. It feels, oh. it feels like there's a bit of acid. You can taste the individual com components of it. Mm -hmm. It's not harmonious. It's, it's weird that I say that because I wouldn't ever say that before, but since I was kind of drinking more, it feels like it's disjointed <laughs> in a kind of funny way. It's like, you can, you can taste like, you can taste the acid and taste the tannin and taste this. It's not coming That's together. That's a good way to say it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you taste the alcohol. It's really prevalent. You taste the yolk. In stages, yeah. what you taste. Um, and the, the, the first thing is, is the alcohol that comes out. Um, I need a bit more, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a bit, the my favorite capsicum word, it, it, that doesn't really come through in regards to this. Uh, it's more dark roots, right? Yeah. Like I feel like for this one, because it has all that, I feel that maybe it needs some food, definitely. Whereas with some cab salves, it feels quite good to just drink it by itself. With this one, it feels like it needs something. Yeah. Maybe to, I don't know, balance it out a bit because it does feel a bit, I don't know, disjointed. Yeah, I get what you're saying. There's, there's something, the, the, the word that's coming to me is that there's something of not it's lacking complexity to it like yeah. uh it, it does come across in stages in, t in terms of what you're going to taste you're going to get the alcohol and then the flavor and mm. then and then the tannin and the finish and, and maybe okay i get what you're saying they're like separate pieces on a lego block yeah. uh as opposed to being blended in together yeah exactly yeah that's true it's, um, it's in the different bags in the lego lego set that's been put together to create the uh, the the lego statue <laughs> How's that? That Does works. I'm, work? I'm going with that one. I'm Go going on. with that one. Uh, and and yeah, there is there's something odd about the complexity to this. I I, so I, I don't put, feel it's. If like I was going to put you on the spot, would mm. you put this out of ten then? Yeah, you know what? I'm not violently going. Oh, it's it's disgusting or anything like that. It's it's still enjoyable to drink. Probably, I'd probably give it a six out of ten. You're reading my mind again. Jeez, oh, seriously. <laughs> seriously. And, and and the reason for that is, like I was saying, I, I feel like it, it's lacking a bit of complexity. Uh, and, and, and what's your thoughts around so why get, is it a six? So six out of ten because it's okay, yeah. but I wouldn't say good or great. Like I say six is okay, seven, eight is good, and then nine is like great. Like I'll kind of put it that type of scale. Mm. So that's why I kind of give it a six. It's, it's not like – I'll, I'll – I'll quite happily drink it. Yes. But do I love it? No. No. You know what it reminds me of? We did an episode on the goon bag and we had a bagnum that was heavily oaked and, and quite vanilla and, and, and quite, uh, it, it wasn't complex at all. But the bagnum, that, that drink, it had really a harsh bit of flavor. Yeah. This doesn't have that. So yeah. uh, it kind of reminds me on that. But, but and, and, and so is this choice is this a reflection of a good napa wine when when it was chosen uh, i would say it's a a a, a little snippet of what napa yeah. cabernet like i do remember when i was there when was the box like 2013 or something like that i think um i remember a lot of use of oak i think at that yeah. point at that time i was going i love oak you know that kind yes. of vanilla toasty yeah. thing yeah but now as you kind of go... Your flavors oh, change. Your flavor yeah, profiles yeah, change. Yeah, you know, yeah. Your, your, your preferences change. And now it's like, I think I kind of remember a bit of that again. Yeah. But I'm um, keen to kind of then go through again Napa again. Because again, we're very much generalizing on... Yes. This is Oregon, this is Napa. Yes. Got to go to different wineries. This and is... And different expressions as well. This is one wine that personally I've, I've never tasted any. So yeah. it may not reflect uh, all of them. But I, I think what I would say is that from the small sample that I've seen so far, to me, it kind of reflects that American culture and personality about being bold, uh, strong, outspoken, and so forth. Like both of these still have that kind of punch to it. Mm. Uh, but I am absolutely keen to try more. 
absolutely keen to try Steph Curry's wine. He, he, oh, yeah. he, he, he's got some wine. I think he Carmelo might Anthony as well. Carmelo right? Anthony, all of those. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a great intro to it. And so was there any last words that you wanted to say about USA wines? Um, I guess the thought that comes to my head is, right, um, you know, I think it's a continued wine journey. Mm. You know, just keep on trying different wines as you kind of go around the world. And I think for today, first time having these wine, wines for ever. Yes. And it's great, again, just to compare and then helps you maybe appreciate the different nuances around like the different areas around Cab Sav, Pinot within Australia, New Zealand, or wherever you've been. Yes. So again, it's just building up that vocabulary and knowledge bank and knowledge base around around wine. So yeah, I, even for us, us as kind of Joe Blows. Completely agree. I, I think that's what the exciting thing is about wine. There's, there's such a variety out there to try. Don't stick to your local wines. Uh, see what else is out there in the world. There's a lot of wines out there. I'm yet to try from different countries. This has been a great introduction into yeah. the USA wine. So thank you. And thank you to your cousin-in-law for, for bring, bringing this across. Shout out to Robin. Shout out to Robin. Well done. <laughs> and so that's the wind up for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we say here, drink, drink more, more, try more, more learn more. more. Thanks Bye. all.